wrestling fans, and welcome to another edition of NBC's 10 Count. I'm Steve Fall. On today's episode, very special. I'm talking to Steph the Lander, formerly in NXT, known as Persia Parada. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm doing really good. Um, uh, I'm I think your cat's doing really good, too. I see your cat running back and forth. I love it. She's doing acrobatics. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> the, the weather is lovely in Florida. Um, everyone's in a great mood, so I'm doing good. Good, 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 good. So let's jump into some questions because I think obviously your story is so fresh right now. And I think people really want to hear your perspective on a lot of things. And, uh, you know, we'll get into the bigger pieces, but let's talk about when you first got hired, March 2021, you brought in, that's still NXT black and gold. But then eventually yeah. NXT 2.0 becomes a thing in September of 2021. Now, were you told there was a direction of what NXT 2.0 was supposed to be? Obviously, it's supposed to be different from black and gold, but were you told, like, the direction from management? Um, there wasn't, there, there wasn't, like, a concrete, like, one day we had a big meeting and we all knew that the changeover was happening mm. and what they wanted from us. It was more of kind of like a gradual process of, you know, we heard that the arena was changing changing and we heard the new logos and then we got a new song and then so it was it was a even though it felt like it was an overnight kind of thing I'm sure from the outside and in mm. some ways from the inside it did too it was kind of like a slow trickle with certain things of things were changing but it wasn't like a you know powerpoint presentation of like mm. this is what we're leading to it was it was a little <laughs> bit more gradual than it seemed um and then yeah as far as like what the content has become and what they wanted from us same kind of thing. It was more individual conversations with, uh, I mean, in my case anyways, individual conversations with the talent and storylines and that kind of thing of what they wanted to see rather than like an overall across the board, mm. uh, yeah, like meeting or anything like that. Okay. Because Ember Moon, uh, Athena, recently did an interview where she was told there was a meeting and she was in it. And I want, yeah. I want your thoughts about this. She was told... Yeah. Be, I guess the words would be sexier, more sexualized women in and show up in, in, I guess, smaller clothing. Is that right. the direction you were told individually or were you even in one of these meetings? Um, I mean, individually, I wasn't told anything like that. But for me, before I came to WWE, you know, I would do bikini photo shoots. That's the kind of content that I would post on social media. Like I was very comfortable with all of those things. Um, I obviously can't speak on behalf of anyone else, but for my own personal situation, um, I mean, when you watch the TV show, you can see there has been a slight shift uh, in ring gear and those kind of, you know what I mean? Like all of that kind of stuff, like you can see that. Um, I wasn't told anything directly, but I, you know, I just kind of saw the change and put myself in a way to kind of move with that change. And yeah, as I said, none of that made me personally feel uncomfortable because that's, as I said, that's nothing new to me. That's stuff that I've been doing, you know, when I was on the Indies in Australia and also all of the female wrestlers that I look up to are that same kind of vibe. So I could see how some people would feel uncomfortable with the change in content on the TV show. But for me, I was very comfortable with what I was doing. Okay, yeah, because the, the perspective online is NXT 2.0, you know, like you said, there was no PowerPoint presentation, but the overnight change fans, I think, are feeling that they were, this has been Attitude Era 2.0 versus NXT 2.0. And that's the perspective of a fan, you know, but obviously you were there backstage. So you, like you said, you were not individually told to do these things but you're comfortable with these things and i saw online you're teasing an only fans account oh, I, I, yeah. you have created a buzz on the internet like is this is this gonna happen uh yeah it is gonna happen in it's gonna happen days. it's gonna happen confirmed uh yeah in the next few days i'm getting all of that set up so that's exciting and that's that's something too it's like like uh as you said with like the attitude era 2.0 um, I mean, again, to, to the storyline that I was doing, you know, before I left, that is quite an Attitude Era uh, story. Yeah. Um, but the flip side of that is, you know, and it, it is kind of in my personality to find the positives in everything is like, we got on TMZ. <laughs> and I don't think I would have got on TMZ for a five minute wrestling match. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think there is 
a lot of positives in what 2.0 has become and what they are doing too. Um, but yeah, for me personally, like with that story, being able to create a lot of buzz, like my socials like totally blew up from that. Like I got a lot of uh, personal exposure from the things that we were doing. Um, and then now, you know, I can kind of jump off that. I can make money from that uh, with my OnlyFans and with what I do in the future. So for me, like I have no problems with what I did because for my own personal brand, it definitely has helped me. Of course. And, and if yeah. anyone judges progression in your own career for the things you did, well, that's that's their problem. Guess what? You got to pay the bills. You got to yeah. keep the lights on. And and if you feel comfortable doing whatever you're doing, then that's fine. But folks, only fans account. It's it's confirmed. It's confirmed. Yeah, it's so now cool. everyone get their wallets out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but recently, though, you you were let go by the WWE, and I think a lot of people are shocked you were in a middle of a storyline and mm -hmm. it didn't wrap up and i think people want to know did you see this coming because of the past releases we've seen in wwe or is this a complete shock to you um i would say it's both like i not even for myself but i think in general for a talent to be let go smack bang in the middle of a story when i was on tv every single week yeah. for three months and so was Dexter I think in that sense it's a surprise but you know the other the flip side of that is since I arrived in March 2021 pretty much as soon as I arrived is when they started doing the big releases where they released like the Iconics and I'm pretty sure Chelsea Green was in that and a lot of really big names mm. that were incredible like Jesse McKay wrestled on Wrestlemania a few days before and then got released so I think to see that and then for that to happen, you know, every few months, the entire time I was with WWE, uh, I think it would be silly to say it was a complete shock because, you know, for me personally, you know, you know that phone call is coming at some point. It's inevitable that it's going to happen. Of course, I wish it didn't happen now. Mm -hmm. uh, in some ways, it was a shock just because I was in that story. But at the same time, I kind of did a lot of work preparing myself for that, like emotionally as well. Uh, I think I had a good grip of understanding that, you know, that could really happen at any point. And it did. <laughs> so are, does everyone feel that way? Does every, everyone you talk to, your friends with, or, or backstage at NXT or SmackDown Raw, does everyone feel that their number could be called at any minute? Um, I, I mean, obviously I can't speak on behalf of everyone. Right. Um, I know some people do. I know for me it was a big stress and that was something that I kind of struggled to let go of that feeling. Um, and it's so easy to say like, oh, just don't worry about it. But you know, if, if that's kind of your personality and you're inclined to, yeah. And to be fair, it's like, that's my dream job. And that's also my visa to stay in the country. So that's a lot of stress packed into one thing. So to have that feeling of that getting ripped away from you at any moment, obviously is going to create worry for anyone. Um, but as far as other talent, you know, I think some people are really good at just having that kind of whatever will be, will be. If it happens, it happens. You know what I mean? Some mm -hmm. people are very okay with uh, the level of uncertainty. And then obviously some people aren't. But I think that's just when you have a bunch of, you know, 100 people, 200 people, whatever. Obviously, certain people are going to cope with certain things one way. Other people are going to be fine. Other people are going to worry about it. It's just the nature. of It's just human nature, I guess. So, yeah. But it, do you feel like that's a little strange going to work every day thinking you're going to be laid off? Is that a, not a good feeling to have? Oh, yeah. Like for me, it was, you know, I was worried. Like I, it's, it's one of those things that I, I wish it wasn't that way. Uh, I, there's nothing that we could do to change that. Of you course. know what I mean? So it's just one of those things where you, you've just got to learn to try and accept it and understand it and just, kind of live in that mindset of like every week I'm just going to do my best and whatever happens happens and I did try to do that and I'm thankful you know I look back on the on the year that I spent and obviously I'm going to have a lot of different feelings and that kind of thing but for right now I don't regret anything because I feel like I did pour 100% of my soul into every single thing that I did like I did put a lot of effort into my training and into my promo classes and you know, my storylines, like I, I, when I was in there, I, I knew like, 
this isn't forever and make sure whatever you do, when you look back, you're proud of what you did. You don't have any regrets of, oh, if only I did this, if only I did that, if only I pitched this, like I kind of, I did leave every stone unturned. So, you know, I, I gave it everything and I don't have any regrets of if only I had done this, you know? Of course. And I, I just think uh, going to work every day thinking you're about to be uh, laid off is probably an unhealthy uh, work environment. But again, that's the nature of the beast. It can happen at any job, any day, anywhere. So unfortunately, you know, but you had your dream, you achieved your dream and some people don't ever get to even, even uh, get close to their dream. So congratulations on that part of it, because that's something crazy. But were you ever told, hey, we have plans for you for SmackDown. We have plans for you for Raw. Were there ever meetings about, hey, you're going to get moved up and this is what we want to do with you? Um, I didn't have any particular one-on-one meetings about uh, moving to the main roster or anything like that. But I do know that a lot of those kind of conversations are behind closed doors. Like a lot of the time, talent might not even be aware of those discussions about themselves. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. I didn't have any particular, yeah, uh, meetings about moving up, but that's not to say that that wasn't kind of either in the works or being discussed or anything like that, because yeah, the way that, and this isn't even with WWE, but the way that it works with wrestling is it's like, oftentimes as the wrestler, it feels like you're the last to know certain Mm. things. (laughs) Uh, so yeah, what I know versus what the reality was and what was actually going on is very different. So nothing that I had heard, but as I said, it very well could have been something that was discussed and I just wasn't aware of it. Yeah. I think you and Indy would have made a great addition to the women's tag team division on, on the main roster because you know, it's, it's, uh, it's it's about this big sometimes. So I think you guys going up there would have been nice, but what was your favorite part? Because let's not harp on, you know, the, the, what happened. Let's hop on the good times because you were, in a great storyline with Indy and Dexter and all that. And but what was your favorite moment? Maybe well, who was your favorite person to work with? Uh, straight off the bat, my favorite moment uh, was definitely when I had um, a triple threat match with Io Shirai and JC Jane. Um, yes. And it's quite bizarre because JC Jane injured herself <laughs> quite early on. Um, and then that kind of led to me and Io throwing any sort of structure that we had out of the window and just kind of working together for the next six minutes to make this TV match happen, you know? And that, that was a really cool moment because that was, I think, my second match in WWE. So obviously I had no, really no TV experience. Like I was very fresh to TV wrestling, mm. uh, working against Io Shirai, who is the god. Like I've you know, I've just thought she's amazing for so many years. I've looked looked up to her so much. I always hoped I could work with her. But also keeping in mind there is a language barrier there. So that makes things a little bit more difficult. Mm. Um, but being able to be in that moment and be able to work with EO and still create, you know, a great match and, you know, kind of survive that situation that I think a lot of other people would have, like, really struggled or just totally, you know, blew it. Uh, to be able to come backstage and have like the really warm reception that I had from everyone and just know like I did really good work that night. That was really special, especially so early into my uh, TV career. That was like a really big boost of confidence that I needed at that time. Um, and then apart from that, I mean, you know, the the ladder match was pretty cool. Like I think that yeah. was like my third match ever at WWE. So like <laughs> Yeah, my third match being a ladder match on a TV special for the Tag Team Championships. That was really amazing. Um, And then, yeah, kind of like the latest stuff, doing all the stuff with um, Duja and Index. You know, I know a lot of people have a lot of opinions on that story, (laughs) but I had a lot of fun. I was working with like four really amazing people. Uh, And yeah, so being able to to kind of do that and create those moments and create those memories, like while we were doing this stuff, you know, some of the things felt so silly, but we kind of all looked at each other and we're like, I think this is the, you know, these are the kind of things that in 10 years time, people are going to look back and go, oh my God, can you believe that they did that? You know what I mean? And of course, yeah, not for nothing, but you know, as I said, kind of before, if I just had a bit like a throwaway wrestling match that kind of gets forgotten about really quickly. But I think the the stuff that we created in my last few months there, I think that is quite memorable. So yeah. that's important to me too. Yeah. I do agree on that, that people think, you know, bell to bell is what matters. But I think backstage and the, the, the wedding 
with Dexter and Indy, like in you involvement, and like all of that, people are going to recall quicker than you could have had a hundred matches. And yeah, the, the ladder match to me sticks out the most because of the physicality and it's a ladder match. The moments involving the relationships you were creating and the, the hilarious backstage antics, I think, was the part that people are always going to go like, oh, I want to watch that on Peacock right now because it's there and they can watch what you've done so far in your career. And obviously there's going to be so much more. So we're all looking forward to what you got next. But um, I think people also want to know about this. Triple H, he had a medical uh, issue. Pretty much he, he's reset it. He, he was – his heart was not working properly. And many people – now, maybe you can confirm or deny this. Maybe people think that NXT 2.0 was not going to happen, but Triple H's medical issue pulled him away, and hit. suddenly the image of NXT was that he had was gone. NXT 2.0 suddenly became this new uh, fun thing. Do you feel like Triple H kind of stepping away was the reason NXT 2.0 happened, or that was going to happen no matter what? Honestly, I have no idea. Like mm -hmm. that's a that's a really good question because the timing is definitely convenient for that. <laughs> like yeah. the, for yeah. him to leave and then for it to all change. Like I'm, but hey, they could have had these 2.0 plans in the works for a year. You know what I mean? So I genuinely have no idea. Um, but the other side of it too is pretty much quite soon after I arrived, Triple H had his health problem and he left. So. I honestly, which is such a shame because I love Triple H. He's my favorite wrestler. If anyone really knows me, they know Triple H is my favorite. Um, but it's such a shame because, yeah, I barely, barely got to work with him. So I don't even really know, you know, maybe someone that worked with Triple H for years would be able to say like, oh, yeah, he wouldn't want to do this 2.0 stuff. You know what I mean? Like, but I don't have enough of a personal relationship with him to be able to speak on like whether or not he would be a part of 2.0 or not like I it, it all kind of happened before I got here so mm -hmm. I, I actually that one I have no idea because <laughs> yeah there's the, the theory definitely online is Triple H it, it's like a security guard for museum you know um if the shirt people want to rob the museum the security guard's always there well if the security guard's not there people are going to go rob the museum and change it up and move where they want to do and I think people believe that's the case but again you don't yeah. you don't know so We'll just let yeah. the speculation keep running wild online. Yeah, <laughs> let that <laughs> ball keep on rolling and get bigger. But mm -hmm. let's talk about your goals for this year because right now you're already being booked for future events. So, like, what are your yeah. goals for this year? Yeah. Um, my goals for this year are just to kind of like stay busy and I'm being a little bit more selective of what I'm doing. Like, you know, I said this the other day, but when, when I was 18 and 19 and 20, and I was just kind of starting out, I wanted to do every single thing and every single match and get as much experience and exposure as I could, because, you know, obviously what I did then led me to where I am now. So mm -hmm. I did the right thing, but for now, for where I'm at, for what I've just done, uh, I am being a little bit more selective of, you know, the shows that I'm doing and the matches that I'm going to be doing and all those kind of things. Not to say that I'm not going to be super busy because I'm already swamped, but I am just kind of picking and choosing a little bit more about what I'm doing. But yeah, my my future goals are I'm I'm going to be staying in the United States, which is really exciting because that's the uh, that as I mentioned before, that's that was the main stress. I really didn't want to go go back home, so thankfully I'm going to be able to stay in the U.S. Um, fill up my calendar, spend the next, you know, whether it's six months, 12 months, whatever, spend the next period of time just kind of like really enjoying myself and doing all of the things that have been thoughts in the back of my head in the last year of like, oh, maybe that would look cool. Maybe this jacket would be good. Maybe this gear, would, you know what I mean? Maybe I should do this move. But, but all of those things that uh, you you can't do because there's a million reasons why, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that go into the WWE machine that it's not just as simple as I want to have this outfit. And then the next week you have it, you know what I mean? Like, like there's a lot, there's a lot more that goes into it. So I am actually really looking forward to kind of like getting back to my roots of like who I am, Steph Delander, the pipe and powerhouse. Like this is what I was doing before WWE. Um, so it's really cool to be able to take what I've learned in the last year of like TV wrestling, entertainment, all of those things like that superstar status 
and then create the second version of Steph Delander and just make it, you know, out of control. So that's what I'm looking forward to do the most. Yeah. Well, that is awesome. I, I can't wait. Your, you know, your positive energy is coming through the screen. So I thank you so much. <laughs> Steph Delana, thank you so much for being here on NBC's 10 Count. Thank you for sharing your story because I know a lot of people wanted to know about it. And, and you answered a lot of questions that people have been probably been wondering for a long, long time. So I appreciate you being here. Folks, follow her. She's doing everything you want to do in life. Only fans, travel around the world, stay in America. That's awesome. So thanks for being here. And folks, thanks for watching NBC's 10 Count. I've been Steve Fall. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Bye.